Hello, my name is Clayton Morris and I run the Springbank Clay and Aquatics YouTube channel. It's basically about me being a big old clay geek, a little bit awkward on camera, and the fact that building this shop is slowly but surely trying to kill me. So if that's something you're into, hop over to the, who says hop over? Head on over to my channel and subscribe. And thanks Richard for sharing my video on your YouTube channel. Do you know what? It's been that mild recently. I don't think there's any reason to do anything differently with the pod this year. Although, I might check the weather. Relatively mild air. So, so exceptionally mild here. The air is still mild. It's really mild. Well, that settles that. It's going to be fine. I mean, the weather reporters never get it wrong, do they? Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. There isn't. There isn't. There isn't. Worst gales in three centuries sweep through Britain. They came without warning in the early hours of the morning. Winds that hit 110 miles an hour. 110 miles an hour. 110 miles an hour. I might just check uh, one more channel. <laughs> Yep, no more TV for me today. So, the truth is, the weather's that unpredictable over here, we just don't know what's going to happen. So, the best thing to do is always just prepare for the worst. So, it's mild now, but I bet you in four weeks that no one will be leaving the house without about 15 pairs of clothes on. Apart from that really weird one suspicious postman. So, hopefully these few things that I'm going to go through We'll uh, make the transition from winter to spring a bit easier and uh, obviously the pond's in the best shape it can be when we get to spring. So number one is routine maintenance. Make sure you keep up with it. So make sure you keep on cleaning your filters, changing over water. Although everything slows down in the pond now, the fish are still producing waste so you need to keep doing everything that you have been doing. Also, if you're not doing it, make sure you purge your drains. It's something that's really easy to do. We do it every day in the shop and it's surprising that if we miss one day, you know, because I'm not there or something like that, how much muck actually comes through. So make sure you keep on purging your drains. I advise you to do it every day, but you know, if you can't, I understand that these things happen, but it is really easy. I mean, it's so easy, I can do it with one hand. Why won't you It's so easy, I can do it with one hand and a foot. Easy as that. So number two is to check all your pipe work. If you've got any pipe work that looks brittle or anything like that, now's the time to change it. If you've got any pipe work that's exposed and it's not pressure pipe, you know, get it lagged or get it covered. Because at this time of year, it's always these things that go pop basically and you end up with obviously your pond emptying or leaking. It's just a good time to make sure that all your pipe work and fat pipe fittings are up to scratch. Now, if you're a pump fed pond, You'll see pictures of this on every Facebook forum, every Facebook page, and every forum. Is someone's pipe work split? Something's happened, and basically the pond's completely empty out at the worst time of year, really, for it to happen. Lucky for you, I've already done a video on this, and it's fitting a float switch. So if you haven't done that, I'll link the uh, you know the description thing above me now, like magic, and go and have a look at that video and get a float switch fitted on your pond. It'll save you a whole heap of trouble. So, number three, number three, this is probably going to be the most controversial one that I say, but get a heater on your pond. I'm not saying you have to heat to 20 degrees all the way through winter, but get a heater on there. Set it between somewhere, you know, between 6 and 10 degrees. A carp will go hypothermic under 4 degrees. In a lake, uh, in, a, in a big natural lake, the water temperature very rarely goes under four degrees. Now that's because of water density. I'm not gonna go into that now. I might save that for another video. It's a bit heavy to talk about here. Whoa, this is heavy. But they're never gonna get exposed to the temperatures that could potentially happen in a pond because the water's getting mixed all the time. By putting a heater on it, you're gonna stop all the complications that come with these really low temperatures. I'd say aim for somewhere about eight degrees Listen, you know, there's a heater out there at all sorts of budgets now. There's for everything from the club leaf heaters that I put in at the shop right up to inverter heat pumps that you use on swimming pools. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's going to cost you money to run it, but I'm sure the cost of running it is probably less than replacing all the stock in your pond because they've died. 
Now, I know people are going to look and say, watch this video and say, well, I've kept my pond, you know, I've never heated it, and it's frozen over, and I've never had any issues. Well, there's a, there's a difference, and I don't want to sound condescending here, but there's a difference between thrive and survive. And you are walking on a tightrope as well when you allow your pond to get down to them critical temperatures. So my advice is, after all the money that you spend on fish and other equipment, put a heater on it, set it between somewhere 6 and 10, and make sure that your fish aren't really being exposed to them really, really, really cold temperatures. So number four, actually number four this time, is switch over to wheat germ or a, a winter version of the food that you're already feeding. Wheat germ isn't some kind of plant-based monster. It's just a, a you know a wheat-based food. It's thought to be more digestible than obviously the heavy oily uh, and fatty fish meals that we usually feed during the summer months. Now there's some there's some thoughts on white fish meals and raw extruded, extruded pellets and things like that, but I think for the general consensus and for this video what we'll say is switch over to something wheat germ based or something that is the winter version of the food that you're already feeding and that'll benefit your fish as well. And number five, any equipment that you leave outside that's got potentially has water in it for instance dechlorinators you know like the three uh, the three stage of chlorinators say for instance you do a 10% water change a week and then you fill it back up with your three stage dechlorinator because there's water in that if you leave that outside in freezing temperatures it'll ice over the ice will expand and you'll end up with a broken dechlorinator some of you may uh, have waterfalls or systems like that where you turn it off during the winter. Just make sure there's no water sat in any of the pipes, dechlorinators and things like that. Because unfortunately when it freezes, it'll bust your equipment. So yeah, not a great thing to wake up to is a broken dechlorinator or broken bits of equipment. So yeah, just make sure you go around, check that. If you can't take the water out of it, just bring it inside. So that's it for this uh, this video. Hopefully it gives you a uh, few tips to make the transition from winter to spring a bit easier. If you liked it, give us a like. Make sure you subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one.